I used to have terrible aim three years ago. Like, it was pretty bad. <laughs> but after many hours of practice, it now looks like this. And I get daily comments on my high kill games accusing me of having aimbot or hacks. So no, I didn't install aimbot or buy a really good gaming chair. And it's not because I magically got better when I built a PC, because trust me, I didn't. I got better in large part because I started using practice drills to work on my aim. But it took me a really long time to get better because I didn't have someone to show me what to practice. So my hope is that by sharing 9 of my favorite aiming drills and putting them into a practice routine, it will save you from the months of frustration that I experienced before I started using them. Okay, so before we get started on the drills, you have to know that aiming can be broken up into two major categories. There's passive aim and active aim, and both are extremely important. Now, active aim is what most people think of when they hear the word aim. It's the act of moving your crosshair to a target, controlling any recoil as the gun fires, and then tracking that target as it moves. And on the other hand, passive aim is your crosshair placement when you aren't in a gunfight. The goal with passive aim is to anticipate where your opponents will be so that when they do appear, you have to move your crosshair as little as possible to start hitting your shot. Some people call it centering or crosshair placement, but the name doesn't really matter. You just need to know that passive aim is extremely important because Call of Duty titles typically have very fast time to kill. The person who hits the first shots usually win, so even though flick shots look pretty cool, they're never going to be as reliable as having your crosshair in the right spot to begin with. So just like you shouldn't skip leg day at the gym, don't skip on working on your passive aim. And if you don't believe me, here's what the professional coach for Atlanta Phase thinks. The most important tip to aiming, in my opinion, it's centering. So it's centering, it's centering. And that's why we're starting with practicing our passive aim first. Okay, so drill number one is called the door strafe. Now oftentimes in a game, I'll be moving to a new position and I need to keep my crosshair centered on a target in anticipation that an enemy may appear. This was something I didn't do three years ago and it got me killed a lot. So to practice this, I stand 10 meters from a wall and strafe back and forth while trying to keep my crosshair in the door frame. I also try to keep my aim from moving up and down because I want to be at chest or head level for when an enemy appears. The goal of this drill is really to see as little crosshair movement as possible. Okay, but in a game, I don't always know where an enemy will show up. So I need to be able to easily switch my crosshair placement between multiple targets. And that's where exercise two comes in, the window switch. Now for this drill, I find a wall that has two windows or a window and a door, and I stand 10 meters from the wall, and I switch my aim back and forth between the two targets. I start slow and then work up to speed. I only go as fast as I can control, and if my aim starts to get wild, I stop and start back over. And doing this drill gives me a really great feeling for my sensitivity so that I know how much adjustment to make when I'm in a game. This drill isn't easy, so just make sure to go slow to start and don't overshoot your targets. It's really easy to lose focus and begin to build bad habits. Remember, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And this is also a great time to reevaluate the sensitivity that you're on. If you've been practicing this for weeks and aren't getting any better, you may want to lower your sensitivity to something you can more easily control. Okay, so moving on to a drill I like to call follow the bot. Now a large part of passive aim comes down to visualization. You need to know where chest to head level is. Oh wait, sorry, wrong game. You need to know where chest to head level is for the enemy players around the map so that you can put your crosshair in the right place. So for this drill, I follow a friendly bot around the map and I try to keep my center dot near the bot's neck. I let the distance between us change periodically and I try to focus on where chest to head level is when we go around corners or doorways because that helps me visualize where I need to aim when I'm in a game. And I'll also sometimes change up which bot I'm following as well. Now if you don't have multiplayer for a custom game, you can always get a friend and drop into DMZ or an isolated part of Warzone and take turns tracking one another. Now I know this drill might seem a bit silly, but I really think that it helps for spatial awareness and for centering. Okay, so that covers our passive aim training, so now let's move on to the most fundamental skill of active aim. Recoil control. Now you can have the most insane flicks or the best tracking of all time, but if you can't control your gun when you shoot, it really doesn't matter. So that's why I always make time to practice recoil control. I'll pick a target and shoot at it from roughly 20, 40, and 60 meters away using my loadout gun. And then I'll repeat the exercise with some common Warzone floor loot at the closer distances. And if I'm having trouble with the gun's recoil, I'll shoot it at the wall, look at the pattern, and then I'll try to practice the recoil in one second bursts until I have the full pattern down. And once the recoil control feels pretty good, I'll also 
practice strafing around because you never want to be a static target when you're in an actual game. Now I did a full video on recoil control about a year ago, which I'll link in my description if you want some additional training. So now that I'm shooting straight, it's time to practice tracking. But before I shoot any live targets, the next drill in the routine I like to call tracing. Now in my opinion, to have great tracking in an FPS game, you need to have total control over your crosshair. So I like to practice this by finding lines on the map and then tracing them with bullets. This helps me practice my recoil control while I'm moving my aim. And I try to be as smooth as possible and I also use a gun with a large magazine. And if you're having trouble with this at first, you can try finding a wider target to shoot at. Now I know this sounds like some Mr. Miyagi nonsense. Wax on, wax off. But I promise you, this drill actually helped me a lot. My aim would often jump around like this when I was tracking. And this drill helped me smooth it out because I could see how jerky it was without aim assist. And like all the other drills, just remember, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Focus on doing it right and then speed it up. We wanna build good habits in practice that we can then use in a real game against moving targets. And speaking of that, I think it's time to shoot some bots. Yes, finally, something I'm amazing at. Okay, so we're not gonna just run around and shoot bots without a plan. I certainly do that just to warm up, but when it comes to practice, I like to play like how I do in a game. And one of the hardest things for me early on was hitting long distance shots. I also had a lot of trouble tracking targets when I bought a PC because the higher FOV made them a lot smaller. So for this next drill, I find an elevated area and I simply shoot bots at a distance. I also typically practice with aim assist off because it's more of a challenge. But if you're just starting out with your practice, I would probably keep it on until you get a bit more comfortable. Now if you don't have multiplayer, a great place to practice this is to drop into DMZ on a rooftop. And once I feel good about my long distance aim, I'll start to snap my aim to a static target after each one of my kills for the next drill. This helps me train for situations in a game when I'm fighting more than one enemy. And again, if you don't have multiplayer, just find two targets and quickly switch back and forth between them. And next, I move on to some close quarter fighting against bots. Three years ago, I would lose gunfights in buildings all the time, and it was one of my biggest weaknesses, even months after playing on a PC. So to practice this, I find a small building on the map and I wait for the bots to push me. I'll try to get quite a lot of kills just using hip fire at first, and then I'll move into ADSing more. Now when I'm practicing in Warzone 1, I'll throw in some movements to simulate in-game situations, but obviously that doesn't really apply for Warzone 2. <laughs> A time to cast a <gasps> So senseless. Oh! Okay, so regardless of what game you're on, the key is to control your centering and try to get upper chest and headshots. If you do that consistently, you'll be a tough player to beat. But now it's time to move on to the final drill, Bull in the Ring. Oftentimes in FPS games, you're gonna get shot in the back, which is usually not a good thing. But if you work on your reflexes, you can sometimes make it out alive. So for this last drill, I find an open part of the map and I stand with my back turned to where I think a bot will shoot me. And as soon as I'm shot at, I turn around as fast as I can and I try to win the gunfight. The goal here is to work on speed. And if you can't practice with bots, pick a static target and just move around each time you shoot at it. You just wanna make sure that you can't see the target until you turn around. This routine isn't too concrete, so feel free to change up the order or just practice the drills you think you need the most. Sometimes I practice for 10 minutes a day and sometimes I practice for over an hour. The key is to just stay consistent. Don't become impatient wanting fast results. You aren't gonna to go to bed one night and just wake up with incredible aim. The reality is improvement is forged through the good habits that we repeat each day. So make every day count. And if you wanna see my strategy for fighting teams when you're outnumbered, you can check out this video right here. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.